when I was little, we used to sneak up to the mausoleum to look into the windows. Brittany said the Baxendales were in there with their horses. My sister said no, it's just their dog. But none of that really mattered. What mattered was that we had to sneak up to the windows. Thomas Baxendale and his wife, Esther, built this 11 acre sanctuary in the early 1900s. Amrita, as Thomas engraved on the Fieldstone Bridge, was a shelter for innocent birds and beasts, both man and beast. See, the Baxendales were very wealthy. And creative. They designed the whole island themselves. Amrita had four rental cottages. All had electrical lights and running water. Each house had a sailboat. One had a large tennis court and three elaborate bathhouses stood on the bathing beach on the shore of Squatig Pond. Island Haven, the mansion, was full of treasure and antiquities, specifically Egyptian antiquities that the Baxendales had accumulated throughout their travels. They were an eclectic duo. With no children of their own, the Baxendales left their entire fortune to Harvard University. Amrita Island, Lawrence Island, and the rest of the Baxendale fortune were all donated to charity, specifically to Harvard in 1927. The Baxendale Trust was the largest Plymouth County had ever seen. Esther didn't ask for much in her will. Sure, she edited the thing six times, said Harvard or bus to the Hudson boys. But what she really wanted was simple. Amrita Island was to be set apart as a perpetual memorial with free educational lectures, concerts, or camp in the summer. And once a year, she requested a Sabbath memorial with island roses and lilies. You could sell some of her other real estate, but not Amrita. It was to be held intact as the home and place of the Baxendale Foundation. Harvard held on to it for a couple years before passing it on to the Animal Rescue League of Boston. Things were great until 1951. When a lawyer, Richard Johnson, drew up the subdivision of Amrita Island. Sacred trust, unbroken hole, no more. And today, this makes some incredibly valuable real estate. As one of the island residents put it, Well, they didn't adhere to anything she wanted in her will. Right? They completely discounted it. And it seemed like they took the money out, then they gave it to the Animal Rescue League, and they took the money out. I mean, in theory, we shouldn't be living here, but it's too late now. It is too late now. You can't... <laughs> you know, that should have been settled in you know, 1920, whenever. With four-footed friends, camp closed since 2007. recent sale of the mausoleum 
We hope the Baxendales will not be forgotten. The Baxendales donated their entire fortune in exchange for a promise. The promise was to set apart Amrita Island as a perpetual memorial and to provide education on the care of wildlife. The promises have not been kept. We wish the Animal Rescue League would go back to fulfilling the Baxendales' wishes or give the remaining trust to somebody who will. We depend on our heartfelt prayer and the prayer of each friend assembled here with us today, that our good All-Father may bless both bridge and island to all that is highest and best in life for all its future. Faithfully yours as voices from the past, Thomas A. Baxon.